Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you more information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021, and you can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are found. Even if you go to the Google, or even the Lugal, if you're in the hot tub time machine, you can find our podcast. You can watch me play video games Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Saturday nights at twitch.tv slash marcusb814. You can also find the both of us on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I am at Nick Vern. That's N-I-C-K-V-E-R-N. In this week's episode, we're talking with returning guest and fellow streamer slash podcaster, Kitty. Welcome to the show, Kitty. Hi! How are you guys? I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) We're happy you're here, too. So this week, we're diving into the High Republic. So buckle up. We're going for a ride. So we've been... we. Kitty has been listening to the first book of the High Republic, and I really wanted to do the show last week, but scheduling and all this stuff on my end. Um, and I'm so happy that we can actually talk with somebody who has read the book or listened to the book. And yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. So, Kitty, before we jump into the High Republic stuff, how are you? And what have you been up to? I am doing great. Thank you. Um, I've just been doing the streaming thing. Um, work is starting to really pick up. So I'm working more hours at the the job than I normally have been in the past. But that's okay. I, I, I can use the money. And every day I am still happy that I have power. I literally wake up because I, I wake up pretty early in the morning. It's still dark. And... I look real quick at, you know, the certain lights or my fan. And if it's still going, I just go, oh, yeah, today's going to be a good day. (laughs) It still is wonderful. And if anybody from Portland, Oregon, that works at Portland General Electric, I want to say thank you for doing such an awesome (laughs) job and getting our power back and keeping our power. You all fucking rock. What? When you say you wake up early in the morning, okay, what's yep. early to you? Because I feel like it's almost like when I have a customer that says, oh, we're not in a rush. And you're <laughs> like, okay. Because my mean? not in a rush is six months from now we can start. You're in a rush is like, it could be that, oh, well, you don't have to start today. It can be tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what is your early? I got up at 4.30 today. Okay, that's that's, early. that's for real early. When whenever it can your consideration like what you consider early can be perceived as late still for yeah. people, that's really really early. Well, yeah, back in the day cuz I was a working musician, I would get home at 4:30 because, you know, we would get done with the gigs and then we'd go eat dinner. So we would be eating dinner at I don't know, like 3 in the morning. And then usually we would go to like a speakeasy, like an, an after hours club, get some drinks there and then go home. So what? I've never been to a speakeasy. This sounds lovely. Do you have to knock on the door and say the password? Kind of. It's weird. Like you, you would have to know someone that knew someone. Right. So because it's like technically illegal or whatever, right? Yeah, it's illegal. Like... It, it eventually would get raided and then yeah. another one would pop up. But yeah, That's it was, really cool. we would go there enough that, um, like the bartender would be like, all right, I have to go get more booze and I'd bartend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, it was really laid back. It was really fun. And it, man, the freaks come out at night. Oh, that's, well, that's for shit. Sure. Houdini had it down, man. There were, there was this, there was a group of people that used to come a lot and, I didn't know who they were or what was going on. I just knew that all the dudes were wearing like white Levi's 
And I'm like, what's like white up? jeans? Like, yeah, white Levi's, like okay. bleached white Levi's. And I was okay. like, what the fuck is going on with all the dudes walking in with the white Levi's? Yeah. And it's a dark, it was a dark, dark place. So at least this particular speakeasy that we were in. And they, white jeans were the signifier that you were a swinger. Oh, wow. and there would be a bunch of swingers, a bunch of men and women, and they would just congregate in one part of the, uh, the place, you know, and the music's super loud and, you know, it's, it's like really dark and you're like, they'd be getting, you know, pretty heavy in the, <laughs> in the corner. And then from then on, whenever I'd see like someone with white jeans on, I'd be like, what's up? <laughs> like i know something you don't know yeah but yeah i used to get home at 4 30 or 5 and now i'm like waking up then but yeah. even even 4 30 is that's like i'm usually a five o'clock 5 30 person sure but yeah the and the crazy part is is what are some of the people in our twitch streams it is 4 30 in the morning for them when they're watching us yeah that's right that's right. Uh, I watch certain people that are in England because uh, England is eight hours ahead of us right. or uh, of me being on the best coast. And so I always have to do the math. I'm like, oh, OK, they're in England blah, blah, blah. or, you know, wherever in the world they are. They're like, uh, it's always it's interesting. I love it. To me, it's like the real Star Wars bar. You know, there's people from all over the place, all hanging out in the same place. Everybody's just doing their own thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's great. Uh, what else? I've been playing, doing the Big Boy series still. Mm-hmm. I am playing my Jedi Sentinel. Loving it. And yeah, it, the Marauder is the greatest class in the game. So oh, it's so fun. Every time, like, I swear, an hour. Every hour on the hour, maybe twice an hour, I go, God, this is a fun build. Man, this is so fun. I love, oh, this is great. Why, sure. do you, why do you think Marcus made like 17 Marauder tunes? Well, that's because it was my main and I needed to do operations. And before the 6.0, there was a lockout for story mode um, every week. So I could, I needed like seven of them to be able to do all the operations. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Ah that makes sense so you'd have seven different tunes to do the correct gotcha nice um oh another thing happened this week a first timer for me um one of the one of my regulars um she sent me a jedi knight robe like with the cloak the pants the the entire jedi outfit she sent me one Really? That's Shout out cool. to you, Moxie. Thank you so much. Whoa. And it's it's awesome. So I'm contemplating, you know, getting into cosplay a little bit, which kind of which made me come up with the idea of May the 4th. I I am going to stream all day in my Jedi robes. And I am saying to anybody that's um that's cosplaying to dress up, send pictures, and periodically I'll go through and we can show uh pictures of everybody that's watching and cosplaying so here's an idea too you could do discord and have everybody go live with a camera if they have one and put that up on your screen for like a few minutes so everybody could be in cosplay oh that's a great idea we could do that too yeah you have an awesome discord yeah uh again something else i just remembered um it's only what like three weeks four weeks until April 1st. And I'm trying to come up with a, a prank to play because last year during the April 1st stream, I would every hour on the hour, I would go, all right, uh, I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. And I pre-recorded what sounds like me taking a pee, like a really long pee (laughs) and talk and talking to myself. And anybody that didn't know would be like, does he know that the microphone's on, you know, and then people that have been there before know it's a joke. And then on the hour again, boop, it happens. And every hour somebody would be like, this is disgusting. Or like, 
does he what a fucking idiot why he has his microphone on so i need to come up with something better this year to try and up that and i'm gonna probably add the other one as well and 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 just going backwards uh moxie is awesome yeah Uh, moxie's awesome yeah she came out of nowhere and her stream is awesome so shout out to moxie Twitch yeah, TV she slash uh, Sotor underscore Moxie M O X I E. Yeah, she uh, she does a lot of great stuff for um, like uh, teaching people how to run operations and stuff. That's basically what her whole stream is like. Okay, we're running an ops. I'm gonna play through it and show you guys how to do it. She yeah, he, yes. she did come out of nowhere. Yep. Yep. She did. So Nick. <laughs> All right. There's there's going to be a story that comes out. Yep. So, Nick, what have you been up to other than being uh, grumpy? Yeah. So <clears throat> I think we've ref- we've talked about this uh, maybe a couple episodes before, but not like recently. There's a certain like threshold of me being tired. I'm usually a trip, a uh, pretty chipper person. You know, if you listen to the show, you know that if it's after his nap. If Yes. So like <laughs> I don't laugh. I literally took a nap before this. Um, but like what day were we trying to play Outriders? Friday or Saturday? Um, no, it wasn't Saturday. No, it was this, it was like Monday night or something. Yeah, Monday night. So Monday, I I go to download Outriders. Granted, I should have done it ahead of time, but I didn't. And Marcus and Al were playing. And who else was with us? Well, oh, that I came in later. Yeah. So we're like, all right, let's go play Outriders. So I, I download it, and I'm a little frustrated because the download's slower than my actual internet speed. But it takes like 20 minutes. I'm like, okay. So I sit around for 20 minutes. It gets downloaded, ready to go. And uh, it's like corrupted and won't play. I'm like, what the? It gives me an error that like the, the download was bad, basically. So I redo it. Uh, redo the download again. <laughs> and same thing happens twice in a row. And I'm just like tired and grumpy and wicked frustrated. And like angry elf Nick came out. It was, it was an ugly mess. It was so true. Yes. So, (laughs) yeah. When I'm when I'm like over the 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 tired threshold, like I have very little patience, and uh, yeah, it was it was ugly. So then I played Call of Duty and got all my aggression out. The it does suck though. I will say, even like any game, when you download it, you're actually excited to play this new game. Yeah. And then you go to play it, and it just doesn't work. You're like, come on, the white text box. Like not even. Uh, no menu no nothing well that's why i don't play any game the day it comes out yeah because it's always banged up the day it comes out or any update yeah that's a good point so so anyways i tried to play outriders whoa marcus just showed me is that the new xbox elite controller this is the razor the razor xbox controller yeah wow that thing is pretty it's got rgb it's got paddles on the back that thing is awesome yeah because my wireless my xbox controller broke oh really yeah i was pissed anyway Back at the ranch. So, what did you think of the new Call of Duty? So, uh, the out, is it Outbreak? Outbreak. Warzone? No, War, Outbreak. Yeah. Well, they have a, a zombies mode for Warzone, but I didn't play it. Um, I don't typically play Warzone anyways. So, so Outbreak. I w- hyped it up last episode, and me, Feta, and um, Al played it together. And we, basically, it's like a, probably a quarter of a Warzone-sized map. And you you go around. There's zombies populated all over. There's different challenges to do. Um, you they zombies don't immediately like go attack you. You have to like stump, come upon them. Um, and the different challenges that you do earn you more points. So that you can pack a punch your gun. You can upgrade things. You can you can find get better loot boxes. Basically, not like microtransaction loot boxes, but boxes in the environment. So similar to Warzone, you can open go into buildings and things like that. All the doors of the buildings are open. And you can stumble upon boxes like to open for, for for gear, which is cool. So you can get armor, you can get like different tiered weapons with attachments and stuff. That in the higher the tier, the more damage it does. Um, things like that. So the way you advance is you do all your challenges, you activate a thing, and then you get warped to the next map. It, does it help you emphasize how serious you are by banging the desk? Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> These are the details you only get when we're sitting across from each other. <laughs> so then when you warp to the next world, you get to do all the trials over again. Like they reset so you can do them and get more points. Um, 
and all the zombies get more difficult to kill. Sometimes those be they'll be armored ones. They'll be more of like the boss style ones, like the the mimics or the um, I forget what they're called, manglers or whatever. And you know, you so on and so forth. So it gets harder and harder. There's more and more zombies. They're harder and harder to kill, and you have to like keep upgrading your gear and finding more gear as you go. So at, Joey and Al and I had played it for the first time. Our first match ever, we get to World Four, and it's like I don't know, probably one in the morning or something. Like, all right, you finish by X filling, so you can call in this helicopter. Well, when you do that, all the zombies, there a bunch more zombies and bosses spawn, and they all run at where the helicopter is going to land. Well, of course, and you have to kill them all before you can X fill. But it was like, come, so like you click X fill, and the helicopter doesn't come to where you click it. It comes like way up the hill. So there's these zombies. There's like World War Z. They're pouring over the top of this hill. We got to fight up the hill to the helicopter. Like Al called in a, uh, you can get score streaks too. You can buy them. So Al called, thank God Al and I had chopper gunners and you're uh, invincible while you're like piloting it. So he called in a chopper gunner and it was just like full mini gunning, like the hordes and hordes of zombies and didn't even make a dent. I had, I had to use my chopper gunner too. And then we finally like cleared through enough to where the helicopter could land. And then we finished the rest off in X fill, but it was complete and utter chaos. If you, if there was no chopper gunners, you wouldn't have won. hundred percent. There's no way the X fill was chaos. It was really fun. And it was wicked satisfying to like get through all that with, um, with your buddies, you know, it was really rewarding. It was cool. That sounds cool. Yeah, because you like you're going. It's like the little bit of like not RPG really, but like you're exploring. You're trying to find cool stuff, and then like you open a box and get a you know a wicked cool gun or a high you know rarity gun that does a lot of damage. You're like yes, then you go pack a punch it and upgrade it. It's like finding cool gear pieces. I don't know. It's a little bit of RPG ish, and um, you know random chance, but it was cool to like explore and also you know have that team dynamic of like going to kill stuff. It was, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to play it way more. Um, I can't wait for Marcus to try it. He's probably going to not like it too much, but because you don't like zombies anyways. But it's yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. What's, I, um, you know what the problem is? Okay. Is I actually went to download uh, to play Call of Duty. Yeah. And it was another 50 gig update. Yeah. Holy it was just crap. Like, yeah. The, so, no, right they're now, preposterous. so right now it's like 500 gigs to play the full game. You're kidding me. No, it's terrible. And, yeah. and honestly, it's a turnoff. Like I have plenty of storage space. Yeah. But uh, it's breaking it's, Marcus's desk here. Don't mind it's me. Fine. Um, <laughs> it's going bye bye once the studio is done. Yeah. Um, the it's it's just too much. Like they need to like. I don't know what they can do, like optimize it or something, like put some money into it, but they don't because they're just like, whatever, you want to play our awesome game, you're going to need a big hard drive. Yeah. And it's actually a big a big issue in the community because like PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones can't hold, like you can't have right. an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 that only comes with a 500 gig download. You can't even put that game on your system anymore. No way. And if you buy one of the new systems, the Xbox Series X, or the X, uh, the PlayStation Five. Those only come with a terabyte. So you play that one game. More than half of your uh, hard drive is full of just one game. Yep. Criminy. Yeah. yeah it's you kind of need it. I wonder if it would be interesting if they they built like a like an extra like thumb drive just for that game. So I know Xbox has an external hard drive. Mm-hmm. It's uber expensive. But it's still, you should like what two terabytes or something? Yeah, like, yeah. But it's still expensive. Yeah. And if you just spend five hundred bucks on a new system, you don't want to have to go buy no, a hard don't. drive no. just to play a game. And honestly, they're making so much money on Call of Duty right now Duty. that they they're like, we don't have to, we don't have to change it. But for me, I'm just like, eventually that's going to wear out as their game grows, especially because their Warzone is a different games engine. So essentially you're downloading two full games to play the current oh, game. That's why I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. But this I, up, but this one update was 50 gigs. Right. That's incredible. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Where SOTOR and, and I understand SOTOR is 10 years old. It, like the yeah, graphics like are other games that are new. Aren't that don't have giant updates like that. Right. SOTOR is like 120 gigs. Yeah. Isn't that uh, with um, the test server? No. 
Well, uh, still, that, but that's an MMO. Right. You've got like well, multiple, multiple, multiple planets and dialogues and voice acting and but all the, that stuff. But Cyberpunk is seventy-five. Yeah, that's a giant yeah, game. It, yeah, that's it, big. Yeah. Wow. It, yeah, it's crazy. See, I thought that the maps on Call of Duty were were that many gigs because they were so detailed, or they had some sort of uh, built-in algorithm or something like that. I well, didn't maybe. know that they are two. Uh, gaming engines the thing i don't understand and maybe it's because call of duty is big and maybe because there hasn't been a battlefield game but battlefield one was not that big and they had a lot of modes in that game yeah there was a lot of maps and those maps are huge and they looked beautiful like way nicer than call of duty maps. yeah there can't possibly be like that many more or even more assets in a call of duty map than a battlefield map those are humongous and vehicles and stuff but that's what I'm saying. So I just think they put out a patch and they just keep adding to it. They're yeah. not optimizing their game because they don't want to break it. Right. Right. I don't we'll think... talk about breaking games in about three minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It sounds good. So that's basically it for me. Um, if you are into Call of Duty at all, definitely check out Outbreak, even if you're not normally a zombies person, because it's not really a zombies mode. It's like it's more of a. It, it's really it's just an interesting game mode give it a shot he's such a shitty promoter if you want to play call of duty <laughs> get come to my stream get our disc discord link or go on twitter or oh, yeah. find us <laughs> come into our discord message nick in the call of duty channel in our discord oh yeah come play because him uh nick al and feta are in the discord at least two times a week playing call of duty that's true come play call of duty see nick that's called a promotion yes I, <laughs> promoted i did not uh i yeah that was a terrible sell yeah. come play call of duty with me <laughs> so anyways marcus how's it going and what have you been up to okay i don't know where i want to go with this because there's so many things let's start uh we'll start with gaming okay so out no no back up so we're gonna start with okay. the twitch stream okay shout out to every single person on twitch that comes and watches me play games and you guys are awesome you guys make playing games so much fun i never thought in my entire life i could enjoy playing video games as much as i do right now because of you you know there's so many people that come into the stream even if you're there for two minutes and you just say hey how's it going or you click the follow button for the first time like it's amazing and kitty i know you know exactly what i'm talking about it's it's humbling that at the end of the day there's people from all over the world choosing to hang out with me for the night or for however long on any given night to watch me play video games and chat with them. It's a cool thing. Yes. So that's first. And in celebration and keeping the Twitch stream going, uh, Saturday, April 24th, mm -hmm. is going to be my one-year party. Oh, so, streaming? Nice. Yeah. So, so my first year, I looked back at the Twitch. April 24th was the first time I ever streamed um, live. So uh, it just so happens to be on a Saturday night. Yeah. Well, it didn't matter what night it was. I was going to do it. So uh, April 24th, I'll talk about it more. I will be doing a, a one year party stream and we'll have some serious fun. That's right around the same time that I did it, that I started too. except this will be my second year. How cool is that? That's really, really close. I'm not sure what the exact date is, but yeah, we're imagine within like a week we were, or two. Imagine if we were the same day. <laughs> well we have a one in 365 chance right <laughs> <laughs> good point well if, if we stream on the same day we're we're the bromance is real oh yeah one of us is getting pregnant <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll own disney world so uh okay um as you know everybody that i am uber high maintenance with my gaming computer <laughs> okay that is the understatement of the century okay so Here's what I've been doing. So I bought a new monitor. So I, I've been in this like weird limbo for three weeks. Just a new monitor. Well, we're gonna get there. <laughs> so the I I game in 4K. Okay. So I have an uh, Agon or yeah Agon um, 
monitor. It's 4K. It's 60 hertz. It's beautiful. The color is beautiful. Um, it was a, it's a one millisecond. It's beautiful. But years ago, a couple of years ago, when I bought this monitor, it was you couldn't get a 144 hertz monitor in 4K. In 4K. Yeah. Nor could my video card handle or no video card back then could handle a 4K at anything barely. I couldn't even pull 60 frames on the 4K years ago. Mm -hmm. But I made this conscious choice years ago that I was going to go 4K. So I was. Was that when you had the two 2070s? Yes. Yeah. And that was the only way I could run 4K. 4K yeah, at all. With, right. You were running dual uh, graphics 1070. cards? 1070. Yeah, I was or running 1070. SLI. Holy SLI. Crap. Yeah, two 1070s. You're not fucking around. No, I wasn't. Marcus is, I'll give, for perspective, Marcus's case for his desktop is literally double the cubic space of mine, I think. Size does matter. It does. Well, I do it for <laughs> airflow. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they say bigger is better. One inch matters. <laughs> anyway, so... Moving on. So, like I said, everybody back years ago were like, why would you ever buy a 4K monitor? Blah, blah, blah. The reason why now I love my 4K is because it is so crisp. The pixels are so much smaller than a 1080p. So my games look so colorful and clean. Yes, I may not be able to run at 360 hertz like some of these monitors and mm. all of this stuff. Yeah. But I'm committed to it. So now I wanted to upgrade the monitor and now they have 144 Hertz 4k monitors. And I said to myself, hmm, I'll start shopping <laughs> and I've been doing my <laughs> research and doing my research. And I recently got a 3090. So I know that my computer can actually handle it, handle it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've been kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on which one to get. And all this. And I've been, you know, some of them are like 1800 bucks. And I was like, there's not a chance I'm going to spend $1,800. on Jesus. That is insane. That yeah, is it's insane. crazy. Especially because in like a year, they're probably going to be $400. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. For a big one. Right. So I use 27s. Um, and I was really torn because I almost bought a 2K monitor or 1440p. It's not true 2K. Sorry for all the technical people. But. I have a 4K monitor that is going to be my second monitor. Mm -hmm. And everything that I read said scaling your 4K monitor down to 1440p, it doesn't work because the way pixels work, they work in a square. Yeah. So four is. pixels to a square. Right. So I would have to scale it to 1080p in order for the monitor to look okay yeah. as my second monitor. And this is the high maintenance, Marcus. Yeah, can't I can't that. have a 4K monitor and a 1080p monitor. I did that once. Yeah. And it drove me bonkers. <laughs> because yeah. when you the scroll your the finer things, God damn it. Well, right. But like <laughs> when you move your monitor, your mouse, your mouse cursor, because the pixels are double, you'll move over in the middle of the screen. And on the 1080p monitor, you'll be all the way at the top of the screen with the mouse cursor because of the pixel uh, it's difference. Different. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I can't do it. So I ended up with an uh, Acer Predator monitor. Don't ask me the model. Uh, it's one millisecond. It's 4K. It's 144 hertz. It's got a cool little RGB light underneath it. Let me tell you something. Um, I find that using the HDR at 120 hertz looks better than the 144 hertz. Okay. Without the HDR. Yeah. Um, so SOTOR alone looks incredible at 120 frames per second mm -hmm. and it's very this monitor is very bright so on monday nights i raid with a Provoza team and <laughs> i'm uh, sorry what was that no, nothing and what? uh <laughs> exactly <laughs> thanks kitty yeah so um so i i run with them and on the pub side it's very flashy like they don't want to kill things they want to be friends with them so they're befriending the enemies. Ugh. Yeah. So it's really bright and flashy. This monitor, I'm almost like squinting because it's so bright. Yeah. And so crystal clear. I sound like a high maintenance, uh, a basic. I mean, you are. Yeah, I am. So anyway, <laughs> new monitor. It's fantastic. Okay. Finally, finally to gaming. I've been playing Mortal Kombat 11. I'm actually loving it. I'm not going to talk about it a lot. Um, April 16th, Mortal Kombat comes out in the theaters. 
that will be the first movie I go see in the theater since the pandemic happened. Um, I'll go with you. Yeah, we're I, I I'm so ready for that. I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to leave there and want to rip Nick's heart out of his chest and do a fatality. <laughs> Kano wins. Kano wins. Fatality. Kano, Kano's the one that rips the heart out, I think, right? Yes. The Australian guy. It. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so unlike Nick, I've been playing a shit ton of Outriders, <laughs> and I'm loving it. It's it's a cross between Gears of War, Mass Effect, and Destiny. Um. It's really fun. I think I'm really looking forward to that. That comes out April 1st, so about a month from now. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I like the scaling of it. I like that you can group or you can just play it solo. You don't have to play it on the hardest difficulties. You can just enjoy the story. And what I really like about this game is they are not doing a season's pass. That's nice. So yeah. they're, they're, they basically have said the game's coming out. Everything is being released. The, 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 it's an RPG. It's a square Enix game. So it's going to be really long. I don't know. I don't know how long 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours. I don't know, but the campaign's going to be long. It's going to have end game. I don't know if there's PVP in it, but they said everything that they've done for the game is coming out. And then the next content dump will be an expansion. So basically there's, they're releasing this game for, you know, however long, Mm -hmm. And then they're going to release uh, an expansion for it. And that's how they're going to do the content. For me, I kind of like that because when these games have season passes and you could buy the first year season pass, it basically means the entire first game they're charging you double for, for the year. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're only releasing a piece and that, that got showed to us by destiny <sighs> anyway. And then, um, uh, my team on Tuesday and Wednesday nights uh, called Snack Time is uh, a great name. Yep. We're that been is a good name. Doing, we've been in hard mode ducks in for about a month, month and a half now. We're on the Apex Vanguard and we got them to 3%. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Insert. I'm going to circle back to hard mode ducks in and why we lost. And this is why I we're going back to the bugs in games. But we're going to talk about that in a minute because. Right, right. Yeah, I don't understand, and I'm not a game developer, but we're really going to dive into this because I don't know how this shit happens. Okay. Anyway, last thing is, is uh, because we're going to be talking about the High Republic, I started, I finished Into the Dark, which is the Claudia Gray book. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. It, they need, I, I, uh, I shouldn't say they need, I really hope that they do something more than just a book and comic series with this era yeah because it's kind of relieving and no sith there's been no mention of like a sith i'm doing my quotation marks right but like the enemies in the which we're going to talk about they're actually pretty fucking scary yeah yeah they're very scary is yeah the, they're psychopaths is the same enemy in into the dark is yes the nihil okay got it yeah so yeah. anyway drug so that's fueled what, psychopaths Yes. All right. Here we go. Ready? In SOTOR news, game update 6.2.1 dropped this week. And here come the bugs. Okay. I don't know. That's Bioware. The bugs crawling. Bioware. Bioware. <laughs> I, I, I don't Thanks, understand Gary. this. And I say this every time. Like, I can understand bugs happen. I do get it. Right? I do understand that bugs in games happen. Yep. But this game update has been live on the PTS, the public test server, Mm -hmm. for months. Yeah, I remember talking about it, like, for lots of episodes. Maybe a month or two months. But when they release it to the actual live game, they break the game. I don't understand. Uh, and, And I'm not here to be rude. I just don't get it. So here comes back. I'm circling back to hard mode Duxon. Mm -hmm. So what they broke this time are the tacticals and the gearing in the game. Characters or tunes can like classes cannot perform their rotations because the game is bugged. Like the same. They're not performing. I'll I'll give you an example. Okay. Obi is on the team. He's a carnage marauder. Okay. For the apex predator fight. He usually pulls 22 K DPS. Okay. Okay. The entire fight sustained 22 K. Yeah. Last night, 
he couldn't break 19. Holy shit. Now, now, now this wow. guy knows more about his class and numbers. Like he discusses, like, he's like, you guys don't understand. I'm losing my third ferocity window. And that ferocity window is taking away 13.65% of damage. He went on a rant yeah. later on in the discord. He typed out the actual numbers to show how much DPS he lost. Wow. So we wiped the, on the boss at 3%. There's another, uh, a, an assassin yeah. um, on the team. He was the DPS. I heard about that. Yep. He was bugged too. He was doing 2000 less DPS. Oh, so if two those alone, two why, guys yeah. were doing what they were, we would have won last night. Right. Mind you, some of the healing classes, the uh, what's the uh, operative healing? Mm -hmm. Operative healing class is broken too. Like all healing is down too. So not only are they completely fucked up the game. And I'm usually pretty like calm and cool about, uh, it's just a bug, but it's, it's one thing if it's a bug, if you can't complete a story mission because it's the new content, mm -hmm. but it's a whole nother thing. If you're affecting something that you hasn't been broken for almost a year right. or more than a year. Yeah. Cause 6.0 came out in October of 2020. Right. So it's over a year. It has not been broken. That's great. That's I, I don't know how that a game update would have affected that. Like so I, I mean obviously well, I don't understand the like the engine and things like that, but yeah, it just I seems like weird that. things to go wrong, you know? It, it seems like, like the unrelated. butterfly effect. Yeah. Well you know, it ripples throughout the code. Well, so that's they've explained it as they go to change something and something else gets affected that they don't realize, but maybe I'd know nothing, but this, if this isn't a cry for a new engine, Oh shit. I'm not bringing the tinfoil hat back. <laughs> Too late. No, no. I'm just saying if this isn't a cry for a new engine, the way I, I I'm reading through it. If they had an engine that was intuitive or to 2020 standards or even 2017 standards, mm -hmm. this might not happen as much because they're using something that's such a dinosaur. Yeah. Something that could be a uh, fix with two clicks and a, and a slap on the ass ha takes hours to fix because this engine is so old. Right. <sighs> but anyway, it's, uh, ugh. it is what it is. Well, it is what it is, but I just think it sucks. <clears throat> also yeah, too. That's particularly frustrating for sure. Yeah. And please make the emergency power, um, armor set available in all hard mode operations like as a rare drop other than just ducks in because yeah anyway it should be well, yeah they should well, do that i don't know why they don't like i understand they want people to play the current content but still anyways in aie news nick in aie news uh everybody take out your calendar on your phone scroll on over to march i'm oh, just kidding we're already in march I, Duh. I forgot it's the fourth. Uh, so there's going to be a day with the numbers one and two. It's the 12th of March. Okay. Are you with me? I'm with you. All right. So I'm lost. what's night, going on? on? At 9 p.m. on Friday, March 12th, it's mega. mega. On Friday, Friday, Friday. It's mega. <laughs> Whoa. I need we, one of those. We got to get Nick one of those. Things. Oh, my God. That was fantastic. It was a mega, 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 a mega, mega. Wow. We definitely have. That's next Christmas present. for sure. <laughs> uh, is that a stream deck or something? That would no, do that? it's uh, it's on my soundboard. All right. I need a soundboard for sure. Okay. We're, we're, we're on that. Now. Anywho. So what are we doing on uh, Friday, March 12th at mega? It's guild. Mega. He... Sorry. <laughs> that is, no, that is fantastic. <laughs> Just, just, just keep sprinkling those in throughout the episode. So, uh, it's guild PVP. So it's guildy versus guildy. Guildy <laughs> versus guildy. <laughs> That's fantastic. So Sorry. we're gonna be. Uh, so, so we're gonna start off in the Rishi stronghold. We're gonna do a little bit of group PVP. Then we're probably gonna go to like uh, in just inter guild. So we're gonna do some real PVP in like Void Star or something like that. Maybe play some hot ball for the first hour or so. And then the second half, we're going to be doing Galactic Starfighter. Mm -hmm. And it's basically going to be training for all the new new players, current players that have never really done it. We're going to do private matches. So there's no like 
competitive toxicity. Correct. That you get out of PVP, but it's really to show everybody how to do it. Now, mind you, I will not be teaching you how to do GSF because all I know how to do in GSF is crash into the rocks. And the asteroids. Good old yes. rock. Nothing beats that. Uh, yeah. Well, paper does. No, that was an old, on The Simpsons, it was uh, uh, Lisa and Bart were playing Rochambeau for whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, um, it goes to Lisa's inner monologue, and she just goes, poor, predictable Bart, choosing rock every time. And then it goes into uh, Bart's head and it says, good old rock, nothing beats that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, what's happening? So then every Friday night after that, what else is happening, Marcus? Can you explain that a little bit? Okay, so every Friday night in AIE, there's something going on in SOTOR. Once a month, we have the Mega. It's a monthly Epic Guild activity. I was Mega! Excited. He's He was way too late on that. There we go. No, the I was closing the window. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, it's okay. The neighbors are peeping in. Oh. <laughs> Fucking Rip. voyeurs. <laughs> yeah, creepers. <laughs> anyway, um, so then, so once a month we do the mega, and then every other Friday, other than that, once a month we're doing achievements, an achievement group, and master mode flashpoints because there's some mounts you can get in the game by winning some of these master mode flashpoints. So we have two groups that run. So something every Friday is going on in the guild. It's actually almost like an extra mandatory fun night but on a smaller scale and it's mega fun. Mega fun. And then <laughs> um, we created a new channel in the main AIE discord for outriders. So if you decide to download the outriders demo, come say hi to me and, uh, or anybody else that's playing it. Cause there's a bunch of people in guild playing it. We'd love to group up and have some fun. Come say hi. And if all this sounds fun to you, go to aie-guild.org, jump in the Discord and ask for a guild invite, whether or not you play Star Wars Guild Republic or any of the other games, including Call of Duty. We play, we would love to have you. So but, come, but, come on down. But Nick doesn't promote Call of Duty, so we're going to do it for him. Thank you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I don't even have to ask this question. Nick, do you have to use the bathroom? Dude, did you see the giant watermelon G Fuel you shook up for me? Of course I do. <laughs> I've had to be for 20 minutes. So we'll be right back. Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So today we're discussing all of the Star Wars, but more specifically, the High Republic. And even more specifically, the first installment in the High Republic content, uh, The Light of the Jedi, which is the first adult Cent or like aimed at adults novel uh in the of, of the high republic content spoilers yes it is we are going through all of the spoilers in the entire book <clears throat> so if you've not read or listened to it um turn back now or forever be spoiled spoiler alert repeat spoiler alert <laughs> 2319 2319 that's from you have three minutes to reach minimum safe distance <laughs> that's fantastic also in theme with light of the jedi so um just so we're gonna set the tone uh the high republic is set uh 400 years yep before the phantom menace mm -hmm. uh so the high republic is set prior to i thought it was 200 only... it might be 200 oh, i thought it was 400 let's do the google please hold <laughs> Oh, we do some fact checking. Dun, 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 dun. We appreciate dun, your call. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. Oh, the echo is very nice. I need a soundboard. Oh, 300 years. Sorry. We split the difference. <laughs> okay, perfect. We're okay. a compromising podcast here. Yeah. So the only person that we know so far. Um, the only character that's around in this time frame that we're familiar with is Grandmaster Yoda. But he's like barely in the book basically so it's all new characters which is cool <clears throat> so if you will uh i guess i'll set the stage with a little bit of, of background um so there's no sith at all like or at least they're not 
if they're operating in the galaxy somewhere, because obviously we know the rule of two is still a thing during this time, but they're not like pre- pr- prominent. Um, this is when they're like entirely in the shadows. Um, I don't know how old Plagueis lives to be, but if he's essentially, he's not relevant. Yeah, he might not even be born at this time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he is. Right. So, Light of the Jedi. Op- so, it's all, the Republic is like barely expanding into the Outer Rim. In this we are frame. all the Republic. We are all the Republic. We are all the Republic. And <laughs> that's one of the uh, catchphrases if you haven't read the book. <laughs> we are all the Republic. So, we are all the Republic. I'm just going to go ahead and we have a summary here. And basically how this is going to go, we're going to go through the summary and discuss the plot points as we go. So Led of the Jedi opens with the words, all is well, which foreshadows the coming disaster of the legacy run, a large ship designed for passengers and cargo traveling through hyperspace towards the outer rim. When an unexpected obstacle appears ahead of it within the hyperspace tunnel, the ship's captain had a cassette. Uh, tries to maneuver the ship out of the way of the collision to save the lives of her passengers. However, the ship is old and cannot take the pressure. Just before the ship begins to break apart, Cassette is able to seal the passenger compartments in hopes of saving some lives before dying herself, not knowing if she was able to save anyone at all. So we open with this disaster. Right. And Mm -hmm. what's scary about it is they're expanding into the outer rim because the outer rim isn't the outer rim right now. It's just like unknown space, essentially. Right. And what's wild about it is they're just plotting these hyperspace, hyperspace lanes. And to be driving in or flying in these hyperspace lanes. And all of a sudden there's an obstacle in the middle of it. At first I was like, Oh shit. Maybe somebody's truck got broke down. In the hyperspace it must, lane. It, it must have been an old Chevy. Hazards are flashing. Down. Yeah. Hazards yeah. are flashing like, Oh shit. And they just so happened to be in the hyperspace lane, but that's not what happened. That's not how it works. Hyperspace right. pull is like a wormhole. So like you, it's like a different, dimension almost that you yeah. access to go from point a to point b so nothing should ever be in a hyperspace lane in theory except, in theory so it was a it's a whole it's a whole thing so this accident where the ship gets tries to it breaks apart in the hyperspace lane begins a series of events that threaten to destroy several worlds in the galaxy which are about to be hit by the pieces of debris from the legacy run the immediate threat appears in the sky surrounding the Hetzal system, where several lives are taken by shrapnel flying out of hyperspace at hyperspace speeds from the legacy run. So the Jedi, the guardians of peace and justice, as we all know, are called upon to save as many lives as they possibly can amidst the chaos and terror, led primarily by Jedi, Jedi Master Evar Chris, Jedi Padawan Bell Zedifar and his master Loden Greatstorm navigate the I love Loden Greatstorm. <laughs> I do too. Uh, navigate the pan such an awesome name. Uh, anyways, Jedi Padawan, Bell Zedifar, and his master Loden Greatstorm navigate the panic felt by the citizens of Hetzal as they try to access ships to get off the planet, using their skills with a lightsaber to keep marauders from taking advantage of the disadvantaged uh, civilians in the system. So I will say uh, personally, I thought this whole development of the disaster breaking apart and like coming to to be a disaster was extraordinarily slow paced. What do you think, Kitty? I thought it was really slow p- slow paced. I also, I don't know if we're here yet, but well, I was trying to keep track of who the fuck was who. Yeah, I, it's like yeah. I almost wanted to have notes. I wish I would have looked at the characters up online, you know, because they yeah, had, uh, to get like an image and stuff like that. But yeah, it was really slow. In fact, I got to one point where I just lost interest and stopped listening. Yeah. And Marcus said, keep reading, keep going. Get- it'll, it'll get better. And so I did. Yeah. I was very glad I did. Okay. Quick sidebar. Marcus just pulled out the sweet Cajun nut mix that he was referring to while we weren't recording on the break. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, and that is absolutely dangerous. The whole bag will be gone. Okay, so <laughs> so we're not going to eat that now, uh, so but we, that'll be devoured. I'm later. sorry. Um, we had a mild emergency upstairs. My wife texted me and said, uh, "There's something that's burning from the dishwasher." Okay, so I went up there, and so my kids have these cups that have like sh- plastic straws that like attach to the lid, right? And 
Gravity doesn't. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that she throws dishes in the dishwasher, but she throws dishes in the dishwasher and it fell over. Luke. And uh, sorry, I'm a little distracted. No, by that's Marcus's fine. And, and it was on like the heating element and it was burning and that's what it was. So anyway, so I was gone. So where were we? Easy fix. Yeah. Where was I? Uh, we oh, were just we talking-, were talking about how slow paced the, st- the book starts with the disaster and the Jedi response to it. So I didn't. So it was slow. I almost lost interest at one point, but then I stopped myself and said, OK, we know nothing about this era. Nothing at all. They have to set the tone. And I feel like now that they've set the tone, no other book is going to have to set the tone. Yeah. Because they've done the job now. It's almost like uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. In the beginning, there's a lot of fluff in the beginning because you've got to build the characters. And you've got to build the world too. Right. You have to set the, there's a lot of stage setting of like, um, you know, crap, I'm forgetting the name of the space station, but basically they build a beacon. very, yes, the Starlight Beacon. Uh, it's a giant new space station that they built like on the edge of their, the current Republic, um, on the edge of the outer world to like service the outer world's worlds that uh, are, are getting discovered and, and are getting colonized and things like that. So um, to go through all of that, like, setting up takes a long time on top of the disaster taking Mm -hmm. a long time to like explain like what's happening um i also thought they they really dwelled on like um characters that immediately became meaningless because they died right like it was like oh joey went sorry joey i didn't use your name (laughs) joey went to the same bar every day oh that's right went to the and looked for blah 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 to see Sally, but Sally only was ever nice to him. But maybe one day he'll get the courage to ask her out. And it's to my, and it's just like, I don't know, in audible, you know, audiobook, it's like 10 minutes of dialogue only for it to be. And Joey immediately got vaporized while he was working one day and he was dead. It's like, yeah. okay, well, I we could have saved 10 minutes there. I get it. People are dying because these pieces of the ship are just moving at light speed. You know what I mean? Well, they're, they're also just vaporizing s- anything in their path. They're setting it up so, you know, the next person that they introduce, are they going to die too? And right. it kind of made me go, this doesn't feel like Game of Thrones. This feels like I'm wasting time getting to know the characters. Exactly. Instead of going, oh man, this character's awesome. Which I will say that the characters that do get developed, they do an awesome job of giving yes. them individual personalities and making them likable for whatever uh, personas that they have or personalities, yeah. whether it be good or bad. Right. What did you think about the Wookiee Padawan in the audible book? Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, it was okay. Like having like the, the <laughs> noises was a little, yeah, rough. it was a little much. Yeah. You could have just said what he was thinking and he didn't say it. Uh, what's the the name for the language? Is it like Shriwook? Uh, Shriwook, yeah. He said in Shriwook would have been fine rather than like every time is a little annoying for like 20 minutes of dialogue I, back and forth, you know? I felt embarrassed for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm me like, too. Ooh, man. Do you imagine being the poor voice actor sitting in the while well, he's getting paid millions, he, not literally, but. He did a fucking great job on this. Thing. Oh, Mark Thompson always he crushes it. He just, man. He did such a good job of giving personalities and different voices to everybody in this. I, one of the things that, uh, that I was impressed by was just his performance. Like every once in a while, I'd just go, man, this guy is really good. Who's better, Mark Thompson or Jonathan Davis? Uh, Mark Thompson, I think. I don't know. Jonathan Davis crushes the, the, um, old Republic books too. Like yep. the like the Bane series, yeah. I'm not familiar oh. with him. Oh you, yeah, you Wait, should, have you, you should have you listened to the Bane series? Not yet. No. Omg, your life is about to change. Well, you sent me a book. Yeah, so I sent uh, I sent Kitty the first book in the Star Wars: The Old Republic series, Fatal Alliance, 
which is probably the least amazing, but like you get some glimpses of the players from yeah. SOTOR. The next three after that are fantastic. Cool. I yeah. can't wait. Oh my God. The Deceive book is so good, dude. Dece- yeah, those, that is good. So, Nick, did you read the next paragraph? Nope, but I'm about to. Okay. So, okay, so we got the disaster. There's parts from the uh, Legacy Runs vaporizing planets and, and, you know, satellites and things like that. So, as Republic officers plan to shoot the emergences, that's the name, what they call the pieces of the ship that are coming out of hyperspace, the emergences. Uh, as the Republic officers plan to shoot the emergencies out of the sky, a Wookiee Jedi Padawan named Buryaga Agaburi, that is a tongue twister if I've ever heard one, uh, right, whose force ability allows him to sense the emotions of others, senses that a large piece of debris c- contains living passengers. So the Jedi in expert husband and wife uh, that is a complicated sentence. The Jedi and oh, I see the the Jedi and expert husband and wife pilot team, Jocelyn Pika Adrian, uh, launch an impossible rescue attempt to slow the fast moving passenger compartment and pull it out of the sky without losing lives with great success. Uh, when a large piece of debris headed for the sun is discovered to contain highly explosive Tabana gas, the Jedi, united by Evar Chris's unique force ability band together to use the force to move the object out of the path of the sun, preventing galaxy-wide destruction. So that is a pretty cool scene, I thought. I thought when, so, too. So, for for reference, Evar Chris, one of the head Jedi um, leading this team of Jedi trying to help the galaxy here, this, this one star system, I mean, um, she has the ability to essentially bond, or like almost telecommunicate like short emotions and, and thoughts to the entirety of the Jedi around her. So she could like tele link the thoughts and wills of all the Jedi in the star system to say, Hey, we need to focus on this one thing and get in and, and, you know, use all of our efforts in one unified. Like, it's, it's basically battle meditation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what, is, so in this, in this scene, What was special is this was the first time you got to see the Jedi's powers right in the in the High Republic. Like Mm -hmm. the Jedi collective powers, not just cool individuals like in the movies and stuff. Right. And they came together to achieve something and you could hear how they were focusing and you could actually feel it when they were explaining it in the book Mm -hmm. that, you know, if they didn't link up because at one point there wasn't enough like force power yeah and they were like listen we all and she's telling everybody we have to do this we are the republic yeah and they just concentrated even more there's gonna be a ding every time we say we are the republic um (laughs) thank you and what i enjoyed is they were kind of bringing you know you still have pieces of the old republic in this Mm -hmm. because in the newer like, you know, from Phantom Menace on, there was no battle meditation. There wasn't anything. Right. It was more like focused on combat. Yeah. And like individuals within like a, a more traditional like war style, you know. Right. So for, for reference, battle meditation, is that a um that was a Sith ability in the Old Republic, right? Or is that Jedi also? It, no, battle meditation is a Jedi. A Jedi thing. Move. I remember hearing. I remember in well, one of the older Darth Bane book. Yeah, uh, the the Sith used used, uh, used a type of battle meditation. Right. It's also uh, something used in the tabletop games. It is. It's in. It's in yeah. Star Wars Legion. It's in also in uh, FFG's uh, Star Wars tabletop oh. game. Very cool. So moving forward, um, one sec. Before oh, sure. I really, I thought it was really creative, the way that all of the Jedi saw the Force differently. Oh, like yes. it was completely a different. Um, it was represented different and it felt different, and they saw it different. All the Jedi didn't see it the same. Somebody saw it as like a fire. Somebody saw it as like leaves on a tree. Somebody oh, saw it as, as singing. Mm-hmm. It was so cool. Yeah. And, and they all needed to unite at the same point mm-hmm. in the same space. 
no matter what, however you got, they didn't care about the road you took. Yeah. As long as at the end of the road, it was at the same point as everybody else. Everyone was focusing. Yeah. On People the same died point. from that. The Jedi actually died using yeah. those powers. It's yeah. Avar Chris that hears it singing. Right. Yeah. Avar Chris, the one that unites everybody, hears yeah. it as singing. Um, somebody hears it, like visualizes it or, or, or feels it as like an ocean. Right. Or like there's like strings between people or something. I think it, that I, it was really cool to see. Like that's a point that you never see in any other uh, Star Wars media is like right. that the Jedi people perceive the force like personally in different ways. I thought that was really cool. I thought that was very unique to to anything yeah. that I've ever heard of in uh, in any of the books or anything else. I agree. It's, it's very unique point. to this. So uh, eventually, as you could predict, the Hetzal system is saved. Emergences from, however, <laughs> we are the Republic. Uh, emergen- <laughs> emergen- uh, emergences from the galaxy run continue to threaten other worlds across the galaxy in other star systems as well. A forcing Republic Chancellor Lena So to close hyperspace lanes until a reason for the reg- legacy runs destruction is discovered. A sidebar here. This is the first time that we hear about the actual chancellor of the Republic. Right. And they kind of explain how much power she actually has. Right. Like she's literally controlling the whole galaxy where in the movies and it kind of, blew me away because in the movies the chancellor's like like a part of the senate like the jedi run the 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 jedi run the republic right in my opinion or that's how the movies portrayed it yeah where in this like the the chancellor is it that's like the do all right she says jump everybody just listens yep and she does it for the right cause She's not out for it just for herself. She does right. have that ideology. You know, we are all the Republic. And it right. seems like that's a united theme in the book from all of the, the, the planets in the Republic. Like they all mm-hmm. have that same belief, which is really cool. That is cool. So the moving forward, the Starlight Beacon an important project designed to, yeah, what I talked about, the giant space station, it's designed to unite the worlds of the Outer Rim with the core world, is scheduled to open soon, and the Jedi Republic officers are tasked with finding the truth about the legacy run so that the station can open on time. And this is where, so when I was listening to the book, I thought the whole story was going to be about this legacy run. Me yeah. too. So at this point, I was like, wait a minute. It's over, and I still have 11 hours to go. Yeah, like, what else happens? Like, what is going on here? <laughs> and this is And this is at that point of where you're finishing, like, the first third of the book. And this is where you get that spark to say, all right, we're, we're in it now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Now, like, it's almost like they duped us, like, the, A New Hope. Yeah. So when A New Hope came out, or when I first saw it, I thought the whole story was going to be about R2-D2 and C-3PO. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Because that's basically what it was, like okay, there's Princess Leia, and where are the plans? And then, okay, these droids land on Tatooine, and you're like, okay, where's this story going? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like this, because it's like, uh, I thought this was going to be the major plot point, this legacy run, but this was just like... This is just the appetizer. Yes, that's a great way to put it. It's just, yeah, setting up the characters, getting to know the characters. Right. And then the real antagonists get introduced. So meanwhile... Unknown to the Republic and the Jedi, a new threat known as the Nihil is wreaking havoc across pockets of the galaxy. The Nihil are ruthless space pirates who take without remorse and travel through secret hyperspace pathways that they call the paths. So awesome. Uh, Though not technically led by the eye of the Nihil, Martian Roe, Roe wants to bend the Nihil to his purposes, which include punishing the Jedi for something in his past that is not disclosed. The Nihil are led by three Tempest Runners. All of their um, hierarchy and are scheduled are uh, named around like a storm theme. So the Nihil are led by three Tempest Runners who expect undivided loyalty from those that follow them and are ruth and ruthlessly punish failure. And they're also they they remind me of like pirates combined with Vikings almost because in the books they make it a point that like they're hyped up on like i think it's essentially star wars version of like punk. Spice, yeah 
or yeah, and or like punk rock or like heavy metal or something, just yeah, like right, really right. intense music. And then also they're doing like like crystal meth essentially or crack. They're like like some <laughs> really intense stimulant drugs. They're just doing all kinds of crazy drugs. Right. They remind me of a cross between the the bad guys in New Mad Max and yep. the Reavers from uh that other movie show. Uh, what was it called? God damn it. You can't take the sky from me. Uh, I know what you're talking about. What I... is it? People are right now scratching their eyes out. There's yes. uh It's quite a right. It's a named Galactica. after a ship. Battlestar Galactica? No. Uh, anyways, that's what it reminded me of. Those, you know, those crazy dudes that are all hopped up on on whatever it is they're huffing from yes. Matt Max and yeah. the these reavers that are all about just fucking shit up yeah so that's the imagine them but now they can travel to any point in hyperspace they want whenever they want well so it, what uh, a key part of this that we're forgetting is they were contacting a person for a path okay. so it reminded me almost like at first i thought when they were talking about like getting their path through hyperspace yeah i thought they had a um second site or third sight from the uh, Chiss. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, because they're getting these like paths that nobody knows about. Right. And I'm like, is this somebody that has second sight from the Chiss ascendancy? Right. And that's how they're going to like link the Chiss to this. But it wasn't that. No, it's separate. And we, we, we found out, but we really didn't find out how they get the pass. Yeah. Oh, we found out. Yeah. Yeah. But kind of, but not. Yes. But, like, we don't really know about that woman. Right. Right. That's what's so weird about it. Well, yes, like, we do. Well, a little bit. Her fa- His father got the woman. What's his name? The guy that talks like this. That's Marshan Rowe. Yeah. That's Marshan himself. Yeah. His... It's, if you listen to the book, his, the voice acting for him is really unique and really cool. Yeah. He I... is a great bad guy. Yeah. He's such a good bad guy. Um. Let me just, I think we should talk about this. So I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit in the summary, but so it says Marcia and Ro travels through hyperspace with the help of an old force sensitive woman named Mari Santeca, who is able to find the secret hyperspace pathways that Ro supplies to the Nihil, even though they have no idea how he has access to them. So the hierarchy in the Nihil goes, you have these three Tempest runners and Marcia and Ro being one of them. He's also as a special designation of being the eye. Well, I don't no no no. So I thought he was uh he was I thought he wasn't the Nihil, but he wanted to control them. That's how no, I No, he's in the Nihil. Yeah, oh, he's he one of the three okay. bosses. See, yeah, I didn't I didn't take that in. Yeah. I looked at it as they were always asking for his help and he was like the smuggler of pathways. No, so he's yeah, he has his own tempest that, or at least I think is it is it the eye and three tempest runners or is it is he one of the three? I don't remember. I thought it was he was his own thing. I think he is his own thing, but he has his own ship and crew and stuff. So essentially, he, in order to get these secret hyperspace lanes, they have to ask him for them. Right. Right. But And he gets them from this secret woman that Fortune is like, um, yeah, she's literally like a captured old lady in like a back to tank. Please uh, let me go. All right. That's like got Stockholm syndrome and, and thinks he's like her grandson or something like Which that. Which is a cool, that's such a great idea that she is, she thinks that he's someone else. Right. And she, he's a second generation slave owner to her. Right. Right. So his, his dad captured her um, and like, you know, warped her mind, I suppose somehow. And now, yeah, he so that this this woman, it's almost like if you ever play Skyrim, you know the Night Mother. Skyrim in nope. the uh, in the Dark Brotherhood. Yeah. Well, anyways, it's a very similar setup. But long story short, he is the keeper of like their big secret weapon, more or less. And it, the, all the rest of the Nihil, although they're very you know powerful people with cool ships and stuff, in like a powerful following, they have to go to him for their secret weapon in the 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 paths. So. Right. That's what that's what makes them able to hit and run. People right. they can't follow him because he gives the uh, the Nihil these paths that no one else has access to. Right, that's right. 
So, uh, meanwhile, on a planet called Elf- Elfrona, a family is kidnapped by the Nihil. And the Jedi, including Bell Zetafar and our favorite character, Loading Great Storm, m- mount a rescue attempt before the Nihil are able to take the family off world. So, Avar Chris and Jedi Knight Elzar Mann speak with members of the Santeca, who are uh, who know hyperspace be- better than anyone in the galaxy. The Santecas assure the Jedi that it is impossible for a collision to have happened in hyperspace, but it's clear that they're not entirely telling the truth. So we realize that this old lady, in the beginning, we, we Mari Santeca, um, she is like the grandmother of this family that like has this big hyperspace lane generating business. So they're essentially explorers of hyperspace, and they lost their like granny, I guess. They're the mappers, many, many, right? Yeah, they're the mappers of these hyperspace lanes, and that's their whole business. They're super wealthy and all this stuff. So the Jedi go to them and say, hey, how is this possible? You're the hyperspace experts. What's the deal here? How could there possibly be a collision? What's up with that? Yeah, and they're like, oh, that's impossible. There must be something else. Uh, Maybe the pilot was crazy, whatever. They dismiss him, and then they're kind of like, maybe it's her or something like that. Like, what's, you know, privately going, "Mm, I wonder if grandma's back doing her crazy force things with the, the hyperspace lanes. So uh, then, of course, we realize that it's Marcian Rowe who has her in, like, the back of the tank that's generating this stuff. So I, I thought that was cool. They don't come out and say that, but that's once you hear the last name and you realize it's Mari Senteca, it's like, oh, she's from that family. Right. So And they, the those two Santecas have such a, like, that pompous kind of, uh, especially yeah. when they're first introduced, they're very pompous because yeah. they're, like, they have, like, extremely wealthy. Yeah, they're trillionaires essentially. Aren't they hanging out on Naboo? <laughs> Gazillionaires. Yeah, it was either Naboo or Alderaan, one of the richy rich planets. Um, so, anywho, yeah, then it ex- details Marchand Rowe. Like I said, ex- how each they travel through hyperspace, and he's the the key to the night help being able to to use those paths. Um, so after a scare on Mari Senteca's life, she tells Marcian Rowe that she can identify where the legacy run emergences will exit out of hyperspace, giving the Nihil an advantage over the Republic. So the Republic have tasked a man named Kevin Tarr of the Hetzel system to manufacture a device run by thousands upon thousands of droids to anticipate where the emergences will appear. So you have the Republic using these droids to figure out where they're going to appear next. And meanwhile, the Nihil also have... Uh, this crazy old lady saying with her force sensibilities saying, yep, I know exactly where they're going to pop out, which obviously is going to generate some conflict here. And then, so then when the Nihil show up to the planet yeah. to say, Hey, and the, and the they're essentially extorting the planet. Right. And they're like, we know that this is going to happen and you're going to need us, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, no, we don't. And the, they call it and they're like, well, how did you know that? But they already knew it because of the Republic. Yep. So, yeah, Kasev, one of the Tempest Runners, tries to extort one of the planets. And... Wrong planet to fuck with, too. Exactly. So, <laughs> the planet system, it's called Iriadu. He says he'll offer to destroy the emergencies he knows are coming. Something goes wrong, and he's a, a target of the Republic. What goes wrong is he was <laughs> he was like, oh... He let two, basically there's going to be three emergencies. He let two of them destroy stuff and said, hey, I, it's going to come out here. Watch. It blows it up. It's going to come out here. Watch. It blows it up. And then they're like, okay, we'll pay you. Fine. They pay him. And then his crew fails to destroy the emergence right. before it screws stuff up. As and soon as the credits go over to the bad guys, it's like, whoops. <laughs> whoops. Yeah. It's like, oh, we screwed that up. Time to go. Thanks for the credits. Bye. Your people still died. So... Yeah, that puts him on the map of the Republic, and the Republic begins tracking the emergencies and moving to destroy them. They get into a battle with the Nihil, led by a different Tempest Rudder, Lorna D, which results in a loss of lives, including Jedi Knight Te'ami. Lorna D and her surviving Nihil escape. They escape. Uh, with the Nihil exposed as the cause of the Legacy Run disaster, now that they know they are linking that, oh, hey, the Nihil are popping up where these emergencies pop up, they know where they're going to be so obviously they're linked to it so with the nihil exposes the cause of the legacy run disaster chancellor so is committed to having them brought to justice and calls on the jedi for help though they struggle with the idea of the jedi jedi entering into a military battle as like a extension of the military which is kind of crazy 
because all we've ever known is the Jedi go into battle. Right. right. Like they're the first ones in. Right. With the troops, of course, where in this they're like, ah, we don't really want the Jedi involved. This isn't really their gig. Right. And yeah. you're like, wait, did they just say they don't want to involve the Jedi? Why wouldn't they want to involve the Jedi? They're going to get the shit done. But back then it was mostly peace. Mm hmm. And they were just keeping keepers of the peace. They weren't military. Like they weren't like the special forces of the military. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. They were just sort of peacekeepers and uh, it's a separate. They weren't directly military people. So. Anywho, in light of back to the Nihil now, in light of the Kasev and Lorna D's failures. So those two generals, if you will. Martian Rowe makes an example of Kasev before the entire Nihil assembly and uses that opportunity to reorganize the Nihil under his leadership. So it's, he he was like equal on the council before, and then he like dispatches one of the council members and says, no, I'm heading everything now. Yep. But now this is like you're starting to sense that Martian Rowe has he, he, he's almost papaltining them. Yep. yep, He's been plotting this for a long time because the th the all of the steps it's like he's known these are going to happen right and he's planned this out perfectly keep going Nick. yeah so, he's smart uh i think back to the oh sorry back yeah back to the larger sort of plot points above elfrona the nihil ship containing the kidnapped family tosses out the youngest of the family a little girl named valen and bell who had previously failed to learn how to jump from high distances. That's one of the um, Padawans, mind yeah, you. Right. Bell is the Padawan. So Bell, the Padawan, had previously failed to learn how to jump from high distances and survive, uses the force to jump from his ship and catch the little girl and lands with her safely on the ground below. Well, meanwhile, his his master, Loden Greatstorm, continues to chase the Nihil. Oh, just hearing his name. I know, right? Gives me goosebumps. Loading Great Storm? Yes. Yeah. Which is crazy. I don't know if it's, it's going to get to it, but so his it, name, Gray Storm, and the Nihil are all about storms and tempests and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. And then, so there's a picture in this summary. Of Loading uh, Great Storm, I think. Yeah, right? that's Loading Great Storm. Yep. He's a Twi'lek. Oh, kitty. Can, oh, can you see this picture? Uh-huh. We need to find that outfit. There's a whole bunch of other pictures of Loden, like different versions of him. It's pretty cool. One thing yeah. I thought was really cool about the ships that mm -hmm. some of the Jedi, like the two man ships, they yeah. were just rinky dink. And they like if if you weren't a force user, you wouldn't really be able to use it or be right. able to fly the ship because it's just you don't have that. Um, that extra, that X factor to actually control it. And in order, instead of a key, you plug your lightsaber into it. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do they call those ships again? I forget. Oh, I don't remember, but they had a, they had a unique name. It yeah. was like, but yeah, they were otherwise just like really small, really fast. Death ships, traps like, too. They called them like death traps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if anybody stole it, one, they couldn't start it because they don't have a lightsaber. And two, you wouldn't be able to pilot it because yeah, it's because just like, you need, oh, ah. you need the force abilities because everything's so sensitive. Right. Um, so Cassiv, who just got embarrassed in his Tempest, uh, gets into a space battle with a Republic cruiser near the Kerr Nebula with little chance of escape unless he can get a path sent to him by Martian Rowe. So obviously those two are butting heads because Martian Rowe just basically demoted him and took over the the Nihil. He's running the show now. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kasev soon realizes that Martian Rowe has led them into a trap and Rowe uses the opportunity to destroy the Republic cr cruiser and make the Republic believe that they've destroyed the entirety of the Nihil, although they've really only destroyed Kasev and his Tempest. So back on Elfron Elfrona, Loden Greatstorm is able to catch up with the Nihil and rescue Balin's brother, but when he tries to save their father, father Otto, Lorna D, the other Tempest general, if you will, uh, shows up to intercept them, making them both prisoners of the Nihil. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Yes. But it's some pretty cool. They use like, so like all of the Nihil wear these gas masks that are all crazy and different looking. So they're all scary looking. And um, it's kind of a cool scene where Lorna D um, uses this gas to like 
to knock everybody out, but you, it's all told from Load and Great Storm's perspective. So it was cool to see like a force user like trying to fight through the fog of the the drugs in the air. Right, right. While the the, the these Nihil people are, are like you know invading the ship through the fog, it's almost like that. I, I envisioned almost like a scene in um a new I think it's a New Hope where Vader storms down that hallway with like all the smoke and stuff combined with like that same weird scene in um, Rogue One when he does that. Uh huh. That was kind of cool. Did you just say weird scene in Rogue One? No, that no. It's the greatest scene ever. No, it mirrored the scene. <laughs> oh, mirror. All right. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes in all the Star Wars movies. Um, so Lorna D, uh, again, note the other general, if you will, in the Nihil, discovers that Martian Rowe has been orchestrating every one of their failures to bring the Nihil so under awesome. his control, which is yes. really cool. That and is a cool revelation. This is a, yeah, that is a revelation in the, in while you're enjoying the book, you don't realize like what he's doing what Mark yeah. on row is like up to. And then it all just kind of starts to fall into place. Yes. So cool. It is really cool. Uh, she watches as row kills Otto with Loden's lightsaber. And he tells her that he orchestrated the Alfrona kidnapping, not to bring the family to him, but a Jedi because he knew there was a Jedi outpost on Alfrona. He goes, a Jedi is just what I need. He a says. Jedi is just what I need. Yes, that's that's exactly. How wow, I said that's it. a great impression. Yes. <laughs> so, Chancellor. Meanwhile, Chancellor So reflects on the events, deciding to open the Starlight Beacon on time, but she considers whether the Nihil threat is actually over. In meanwhile, in No Space, also known as like that's the headquarters of the Nihil. It's like a this completely transparent bubble in. Mm-hmm. Um, in the middle of space in no particular like system or anything. So while they're like partying up at, you know, and eating and drinking and doing drugs, it, they just look out and it's just space, all empty space all around them, which is kind of crazy. Looking. What is the music called? It's like space punk or something. I, I forget exactly what the name is, but it's kind of interesting it. because they're just like, ah, party fucking murder. Uh, yeah it's like i think the it's supposed to be like ambiguously punk slash heavy metal slash uh dubstep or something really intense you know what i mean right just like really crazy music um so meanwhile back at the back at the ranch if you will martian row rallies the nihil together encouraging them with a future of destroying the republic because of costs of sacrifice in making the republic believe that the threat is over after Martian, afterwards, uh, Martian Rowe visits a room with eight cells, seven of which. Okay, this is a cool scene. This is really cool. This is the scene. This is the scene for the whole book. So let me just read the passage, and then we'll we'll break it down. After the, he, you know, calls the Nihil to, he rallies them around them. Him uh, afterwards, Martian Rowe visits a room with eight cells, seven of which are occupied with prisoners who are actively being tortured by periodic shocks. From his ship's electrical system, the pain they feel is designed to cut off the eighth prisoner, who is loading Great Storm, from the Force. All of their pain and suffering is blocking his ability to channel the lights out of the Force. So Martian Ro reveals that he was behind the Legacy Run disaster, and that he has used the Nihil as a tool to get the Jedi. At the ceremony celebrating the opening of the Starlight Beacon, Chancellor So gives a speech about the space station bringing safety to the Outer Rim of our Chris and Elzar Man, who has just been named a Jedi Master, walk together as friends. Avar leaves Elzar, and Elzar is plagued by an awful vision of the Jedi screaming and being slaughtered. So, how the hell did Martian Rowe know that pain and suffering would block the Jedi's ability to use the force and that's like the perfect prison for a jedi i think it's because i mean he has access to a force user maybe he got some insight through through her maybe yeah. he was a, a jedi a long time ago i have no idea but so, i i want to fucking know me too <laughs> what if he's the sith lord of the era Oh, like he is a Sith Lord? Mm-hmm. He did say so. Like I remember in this passage from the book, he me- he was mentioning that like he's continuing his father's plan. Right, his father was the Eye before him, and he had access right. to the paths. So, and this is his father's plan that was cut short because uh, somebody murdered. Him. I think it was a Jedi killed him. Yeah, a Jedi right? was involved. 
Yeah. So his father must have known stuff about the Jedi and generally how the Force worked and stuff, even if he couldn't wield the Force. Yeah, because that whole prison cell is made to hold a Jedi. You're right. Exactly. And the whole purpose of having all those prisoners like on hand is to continually torture them so that the Jedi mm-hmm. can't use the, the light side of the Force. Or so he thinks, but or, from right. from Greystorm's perspective, it does seem like he's he's being tortured uh, right. well, by he, the other people being tortured. Right. right. Well, Marshawn Roden knows it, and he's like, you can feel the pain. And the, the key for me is when he goes, you think I care about the other prisoners? If I kill them, I'll just get more. Right. He's a and I got he's Yeah, a, and I just got the creepiest me like, too. thing in my back. I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God. It's and, so and evil. Then, right. And you so now that like there's this vision of people being slaughtered, and it's essentially how this book ends, and you're just left there going. Oh my, oh my God. God. Cliffhanger. And, yeah. and yeah. so if I'm going to go back to the grandma. Yeah. I think the grandma was a Jedi. Mari Santeca. Yep. It was a Jedi. Okay. And maybe she was captured just like. Uh, just like. Loading Great Storm. Loading Great Storm and broken down and then oh. mind twisted. Because this lady is old, right? Yeah. They make it a point like she's going to die soon. It's a matter of So time. now they need a new eye. Because oh, as soon shit. as as soon as Martian Rose eye is gone, yeah, he's kind of fucked, right? Because now he's not going to have the pass, and he's been known to just make the pass. So is he creating a new eye? That right. Is, well, I never thought of that. I don't either. That's a great point, Mark. Yeah, that is really good. So in the next uh, section, it says, "What is Martian Rose' goal for the Nihil?" Let me read it. Yeah. It says, well, while the Jedi are rallying under the slogan of, we are all the Republic. We are all the Republic. <laughs> the, the villains, the Nihil, are hyping themselves up for their own cause. Hype, just, hype, 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 hype. Just as effectively. <laughs> for, yeah, it's starting all the things. For, for Nihil leader Martian Ro, that, chan- that means a chance to solidify his own precarious power base. Previously, more of a figurehead for the loosely allied group of pirates who shared spoils and numbered in the thousand Martian now aspires to make them an enormous army under his firm command. By the end of the book, we learned that the great disaster that kicked off the whole story was in fact an intentional terrorist attack caused by Martian's unique hyperspace technology so from there. The, cool. Yeah. From there, the Nihil and the Jedi move into open conflict. His final scene reveals he had a longer game too. Uh, now that he's captured the Jedi Loden Great Storm, he expects other Jedi to come, drawn by Loden's suffering and that of Martian's other captives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is right. such a great cliffhanger. Like yeah. I remember when when I looked down at to see how long I had left on the book. And yeah. I'm like, they can't wrap this up. Right. I just I, like, I went, yes. It's so good. It's so nice to, I I would like, I'm like, as soon as that next book comes out, I'm getting it. I think, (laughs) yeah, me too. Um, it ends on, wait, isn't the vision that, um, that's how it ends. The other one, that's even darker. So, well, Mm -hmm. maybe not even darker, but it's also dark. So the next passage we have, says, what does the vision mean? So it it, it details this, this, this crazy vision of Jedi dying. This is how the book ends. Right. So you're already at the edge of your seat. You're finding out that Martian Rowe plotted this whole thing. He pulled a Papaltine. Yeah. He's captured a Jedi and he, he knows exactly what he has to do to hurt the Jedi. Right. To get him. He doesn't need to physically hurt him. He just needs to break his will. Right. So then, then there's a vision. Then there's a vision from one of the Elzar man. Uh, anyways, let me let me read it. After the opening of the Starlight Beacon, the Jedi have some time to enjoy their victory. Uh, meanwhile, as Elzar man, Avar's best friend and newly minted Jedi master, experiences a vision that leaves him on the floor. He sees, quote, Jedi, many he knew, friends and colleagues, horribly mutilated, fighting battles they could not win against awful things that lived in the dark. Jedi flee for their lives, and Elzar himself is left alive to watch and watch it until he is too, quote, unable to escape what is, he too is unable to escape what is coming. From context clues alone, the, quote, 
sickly purple light mostly, but you can guess this is connected to the artifact that Martian Rowe holds. Oh, we forgot that he holds, he has some purple thing. I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, we don't know much more about it, but if it has something to do with the Sith, it could be an inherently violent and corrupting force like other Sith artifacts we see in canon. Um, The author, Charles Soule's, own hang on sorry i lost my place soul's own lando comic series featured a sith helmet that could possess a person and drive them to violence this artifact that martian Rowe has casting purple light uh could also be connected to the dren gear the high republic series is other villainous faction yes introduced in the uh, young adult novel into the dark by claudia gray and should i keep reading this yeah so the this is spoiler free yeah, yeah okay. well yeah so i'll read it uh, the den- the Drengear are plant like aliens. That's cool. And uh, the Jedi in that book released the Drengear, who had once been imprisoned on a space station by ancient Force users. Martian knows about the Drengear too. This is wild, wild. There's speculation because there doesn't seem to be any purple light around the Drengear, and they were imprisoned in a battle that he didn't have anything to do with the Sith. Read no more. Okay. So I shall. I so for reference. I haven't read that either. I have not read Into the Dark. So it's, I don't want to read further down right. on so, the notes. But. It, so the Into the Dark basically starts off around the same time time as, period as this. Okay. But what it does is it de- digs deeper into everything. Less Nihil, more Rest of Galaxy. Right. Okay. Uh, Claudia Gray does a great young adult book because she's figured out a way to write it in a way that it's a young adult could read it, but it's still really good and intense and mm-hmm. action-packed. And what's coming next? Uh, the High Republic story will continue in the Rising Storm. This is part two uh, by Caven Scott. The next adult novels in the series, which is out June twenty ninth, right before my vacation, right, Bef- right after my birthday. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, I go on um, vacation in two weeks after that, so I'll definitely crush the book. Yeah. So. And that, you know, yeah, sitting on a beach, That's the with best. The, sitting on the beach with the headphones in and you can play in the sand all you want with the kids. But for me, yes. Yeah. So. I am so excited for this. Me too. <laughs> I hope, you know, I, <laughs> I hope that Disney creates action figures for the high Republic. I do, too. I, oh, don't, re- too. I don't even collect that shit. And I would buy it in a second. I feel like I'm, you know what the High Republic feels to me as we've gone through this? I feel like I'm a part of something so fresh and so new. Yeah. It's almost like the prequels for me. Yeah, like that sensation of this is all new. Yeah, I can can get that. And what I like about it, too, is that not a lot of people are reading. Like, I'm sure they're selling a shit ton of these books. Yeah, Yeah, they're like number one. Right. But there's still a lot of people that don't even know about it. Right. Because it's not a video game and it's not a movie. Right. I feel like we're in a cool special club. Yes. (laughs) Well, what's what's really, really great about it is that, you know, this is a whole nother generation uh, of Star Wars fans that can that this could be their Star Wars, you know. And I, I love that. I love that, you know, some kids are going to be reading this or having it read for them or whatever. And then, you know, they're going to, this is going to be their nerd. Uh, I don't know. Black hole. <laughs> yes. Yes. Especially if they start, I hope they make it into an animated series. Yeah. Personally. Um, to start, how awesome would it be if this is a, animated series for a few seasons and they kind of play with what works and what doesn't. And then they make it a trilogy. That would be cool. And then they make a game and you know what I mean? It's one thing after another and let this grow for years to come. Well, it, isn't it going over a three year period or four year period? Like, of like this high Republic. Content? Yeah, yeah. It's like four years of content. That sounds great. Right? Isn't that? Or is it three three or four years? So we are just starting something. And I am, I was like, I wasn't necessarily skeptical, but I wasn't stoked about it. And now that it's happening, I am just like, give me more. Yeah, I'm all in. Well, it's like you said on Utini Cast, um, how you look forward to going for a walk now. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, you put your headphones in and, you know, there could be a six car pile up next to you. You ain't stop walking because that's, a, that's probably right. in a really good part of the book. Sorry, everyone. I must continue. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Moving along. Move along. Um, so I just want to end the show with. You guys should really check out the comic book series. Mm hmm. The comic book series is it's it's so good. And if you enjoy a little more visual with the story and like you can feel it a little bit better, give the comics a shot. Comicsology is good. I do the Marvel one uh, just because then it's all connected to the actual comic books if you buy them. Right. Because they give you the digital code for the Marvel comic uh, app. I yep. would say, cool. yep. and I will say I'm a traditionalist. I like to read the comics paperback, but reading the comics digitally is awesome because they go panel by panel and you actually get to enjoy each panel's detail and the emotions in each panel, yeah. which makes it really special. And on the 32 inch uh, curved monitor, it looks awesome. Oh, I didn't even think to pull that up on my computer. I need to do that. It looks great. I, well, um, we were talking about this before we started that, I literally paid for my first um, comic book, High Republic comic book, a minute or two before we started the uh, the stream. The yeah, so it's I'm in, and I thought I was going to be um, a little put off by how many uh, different mediums it's coming off of. You know, all the different sources that the High Republic is coming out of. But I, like I actually, book. yeah, I actually really like it. I, I I like uh, you know looking at the uh, the pictures of course, but I also I I have a uh, one of my friends has kids and I am going to be sending them these books. <laughs> yes. Uh, get a test of courage. I read that. Um, that's, that's the like younger kids book, young, right? Young kid book, like middle school. It was really good. So I've read them all. I, I've read all the books up to date now. Um, what I will say about the comics and all the mediums, what I like about it is Disney is doing what Marvel did back in the 60s. So they're testing things out, coming out with books, coming out with comic books. They're going to probably come out with like an animated series. They're going to test some things like do people like the droid episodes? Do people like the action episodes? Do they like episodes focused on the Nihil? Right. You know, I would imagine we're going to get a Nihil comic book. Oh, that'd you know be cool. what I mean? You yeah. know, so I. I, they're going to test everything out before they make a movie trilogy. Right. And by the time this four years goes by or three years or whatever of the high Republic, that's going to go into the shadows for a little while. And they're going to come out and be like, bam, high Republic trilogy. Right. And that's when, and everybody's going to go bananas for it because it's, they've tested the time of what's going to work and what's not. Yeah. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Class Nerds.